This conference will now be recorded. All right, guys, good afternoon. Welcome to the ClearLines training session. I'm your host, Kip Cohen. This is a uh, twice weekly training session for the ClearLines indicator running on the MedBed platform. I am here every Tuesday and Thursday at 3 o'clock Eastern for roughly about an hour to answer your questions and review different components of the MedVed platform and pretty much whatever I can do to help you guys out. Um, not a big crowd today. <laughs> I don't know why, but... A little, little light, but that's okay. We'll, we'll get through what we get through. Um, hey, Bob, was that you that emailed me about the issue with your data? Uh, I'm not sure if it was you or a different. Okay, all right. So there... They're both pointing fingers at each other. One saying it's Medved saying it's Ally and Ally saying it's Medved. Oh, I just got notification that uh, Ally Invest streaming is down. Huh. One second, guys. Um, MBT should be fine, separate system. So, uh, so it's just ally, ally, but not ally MBT. So if you have just Ally, that's probably why you're having issues. Is that what you have, Bob? Do you have just, uh, do you have a, an Ally for your data? Yes, okay, so that's the problem. Th this is just a suggestion. I would have, it, it's probably worth opening a secondary account at TD Ameritrade because you can open it for with like 50 bucks and get streaming data. I have had no issues with their data. You can get news and you can get futures from them. And um, it's a it would be a backup. And even if you're trading, uh, they don't charge you anything. There's no fees. So um, just as a backup plan, like I get, get my quotes through um, TD, but I can trade through any of any broker. It doesn't matter. Quotes just power the software and then your trade connection is set up for trading. Anyway, just something to think about. So I guess I don't need to call you because we know what the issue is. It's an ally. It is an ally issue. And unfortunately, some when you call in, sometimes they don't realize it because they they see their systems are up, but the API, which is what this this the uh, Medved runs off of, it's the Ally API. 
that could be down and they don't even realize it, you know, the, uh, a uh, customer support person. Hopefully they'll get it back up quick enough. It's probably a matter of resetting some servers or something. I don't know. Um, anyway, um, so Bruce, I'm glad you're here. Bruce um, sent me uh, uh, something earlier that he had a question about, and I wanted to go over that, actually. Um, he had taken a screenshot of something he saw on one of my prior videos. I assume that's where you, you, you got that from as one of my training videos, and you wanted to know what it was. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So this is um, this is an interesting component of the MedVed platform, and I'm I'll be the first to admit I'm not that great with it yet because it requires kind of more of a programmer's mentality, and I don't have a programmer's mentality. But it's the it's the scan paint bar function. So let me, let me close this down. Um, there is, if you go to the dashboard and, and you can either go to the mini dashboard or hit shift. Why is my full dashboard not opening? That was shift F12. Um, to open the dashboard. Anyway, you can open the full dashboard or the mini dashboard. All right, and you'll see something that says manage scans and chart paint bars. So you click that. This, um, this is where you can create different scans, basically, that will, um, you can run it on uh, a portfolio, and I'll show I'll show you the advantage of this. And the one you saw was called probably clear lines arrows or clear lines crosses. I can't remember which one it was. One is triggered when there's an arrow. One is when there's an actual cross. But there are more crosses than there are arrows because there's some filtering. So the clear lines arrow, basically. If you double click on it, this is the um, scan. If clear lines, arrow, basically it's if clear lines is within the one candle and it's an arrow, there was an arrow, then set color name to arrow and then set it to shape and then set an alert to the arrow with the scan result. So what this does, what this does is if I turn this on, I can set this to run on a portfolio. So let me show you, I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna open a portfolio. I'm gonna open up the NASDAQ 100 because it's got a lot of stocks in it. Okay. And let's expand this window so you can all see it. Okay. All right. So you'll see right here it says scanner. Portfolios have scan uh, scanners that you can use with them. I'm going to click on that. I'm actually going to double click it so it opens up. So within the scanner, there are different choices. Some of the default, these are the pre-built ones, the default. Price crosses daily pivots, price crosses monthly pivot, uh, regression channel crosses with parameters, 
I don't know what an ant signal is. Death cross, golden cross, price crosses price channel, price crosses regression channel, or unusual volume. Okay, these are pre-built. They're already in here. You can test it out yourself. But I'm gonna use clear lines arrow, okay? And then we have to pick, do we want it on the intraday or historical? Well, we want it on an intraday chart. And we're gonna pick a, let's go with a three minute. So what this is gonna do is, it's gonna look at all of the NASDAQ 100. And if there is a an arrow that appears on the three minute, which means it had the lines had to cross and lock, okay, then, you know, let me know, basically, okay? And we're gonna start scan. So it's scanning right now. The net. So one stock right now meets that criteria, which is Apple. So I can open up a, an intraday chart on Apple. Whoops, just lost it. Hold on, dang it. Apple bring to front. Okay, we move that over here. Okay, so if I go to a three minute, we just had a cross down one time frame ago. See that? Because it's the, the le one time frame back to make sure it's locked in. So what this allows you to do is rather than sit and stare at single charts, you can build a, a basket or a portfolio and you just wait. You run it and you wait until you get a notification on your portfolio. And you can pick, you can pick any time frame. So if you'd rather wait for a five minute or, you know, something else, 10 minute, and whatever you, you you so choose. I probably wouldn't go much lower than a three minute just because you're gonna get a lot of um, false, you know, when you use a one minute, you get a lot of arrows and sometimes they're not so great. But um, let me move this out of the way real quick. All right, so right now that's the only one that meets the criteria. If something else pops in, then then we'll we'll take a peek at. It. Oh, look, we just had a bunch pop in. Here we go. Let me bring this back over here. All right, we got Netflix. Let's check out Netflix. Hold on, this is, we don't need this full screen. Netflix. Oh, let me... There we go. There you go. Fresh arrow. Now, kind of a false one, though, because it bounced. But it did give an arrow on the three minute. Let's check out Cisco. Three minute arrow. NVIDIA. Three minute arrow. Google. Three minute arrow. Facebook, three-minute arrow. 
Tesla, three minute arrow, and Amazon, three minute arrow. If I want to change it, then what I need to do is stop the scan and then I can change it and I can say, well, let's, let's do five minute, not three minute, and then start the scan back up. Micron has a fresh one, whoops, on the five minute. There's a fresh, fresh arrow on the five minute. Now that's an up arrow, not a down. You'd have to, I'd, I could do a scan to do both, you know, either a green or red, or right now it's just either or. It doesn't, doesn't delineate between the two. But you can create other scans. So I could also, I, I created one. Let's stop this one. This one's just line crosses. So it's not, it's not taking in consideration anything else if the lines just cross over and i think it's in the current time frame so let's try that on a three minute so you get a lot more There we go. Um, see, it just crossed, cross, cross. You're going to get a lot more of just crosses because what happens is, um, you know, they they will undo themselves. They'll open up and close. Now, for some reason, this is saying that's a was a fresh cross, but I don't see it. Cross. Fresh cross, no arrow. So you're going to get some that are going to be a fresh cross. They're, they, they'll either be with or without the arrow. Fresh cross. Fresh cross with an arrow. Can you build your own watch list and put scan on auto? Yeah. Yeah, you can build a watch list, whatever you want it to be. I mean, I just happened to pick the NASDAQ 100. I created that one. But if you have 50 stocks or 20 stocks that you like to watch over and over, and then you want, um, and you can, you know, you can make your scans like more in depth, you can say, you know, I want to, I want to cross on a three minute and I want a, uh, you know, uh, a cross pivot point or something to that effect. You can, you can, um, You can add all kinds of stuff in there or let's see. I mean, you can get as funky as you want. I could say, um, let's go into the editor. Hold on. And again, I'm not real good at this, so I apologize. I mean, this is you, this kind of gets into programming. Um, let's take one of these other ones. Death cross. No, let's use. Identifies when the price crosses the price daily pivot point. OK, so this would be a combination of a cross of a pivot point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually copy this 
I think I can do that. Oh, hold on now. Let me do it here. Duplicate. Duplicate. Um, crosses pivot point and hold on. Um, clear lines, arrow, and cross PP, pivot point, right? Clear lines, uh, arrow, and cross Clear lines up or down arrow, up or down arrow, and crosses pivot point. It identifies when the price cross either up or down, and clear lines gives an up or down arrow. So that would be very concise. So then we have to add in the, a new condition, add rule, and that is going to be if clear lines, hold on, I'm going to go back to that screenshot because that has my, oops, it has it in there from, from Bruce. Okay, hold on, let me move this up here. Oh, it's not the, um, yeah, if clear lines, clear lines, um, you have to put a one arrow, and then you have to use this question mark. Zero. This is what the Medved guys told me. Then set color named arrow. Set shape to star. And alert. It's going to do an alert. Arrow. Okay, I think that is everything we needed. Let's save the rule. Okay. Yes. Okay, so now we can go back to the scan. We're going to stop the scan. We're going to go to clear lines, up and down arrow, and cross pivot point is the new scan. And then let's start. Netflix. The question is when, how far back is it looking at R1? Oh, so I don't, it doesn't tell me. See, this is R1 up. It went through R1, but it went a little ways back. R2 up. Um, R1 up, R2 up. Oh, this one just went through it, R1 up, but I don't see the, uh, there's the cross right there. into it, R1 up, Cisco, R3, well, this says R2 up, 
and it's actually R3 down. ATVI, R1 up, and a fresh cross. ESRX. I wonder, that's weird. Oh, Express Scripts is no more, right? S2 down and a fresh cross. There you go. But it was a green cross up. So I probably have to play with it a little bit. Just to, to figure it out. Um, let me go back to the scan. Clear lines. Oh, you know what? It probably... Shame trigger. Um, So it needs to be this and, see, this is where I'm not real fluent. It needs to be this and those things happening. Let's see if that does anything. Still the same, same stuff. See, I'm not seeing the stars appearing on the chart. There's supposed to be a little star. Let me go back to clear lines, cross arrows. Where are my little stars? There's supposed to be little stars that appear also. Alert, scan.
price crosses daily pivot. Let's just run this scan. Yeah. But actually, let me go, let me stop it again. Hold on. Go to the editor. That should be one candle ago. Or actually, we could do within the last two candles. Maybe that's what we need. See, it's not telling it how far back. So we want it to just have crossed within the last couple of candles. Okay, let's see what that does. Well, something's not right. I just want to see if these little arrows show up. They're, they're not showing up because they're black. Huh. I don't know. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so there's, there's a, there are a lot of different things you can do. I mean, there's, it just depends. I, I'm, again, I'm not real um, savvy when it comes to using these scans. Here's unusual volume. I don't know what that's looking at. When the volume, when the bar volume is at least X percent above the average and the bar volume is set to at least Y value. Yeah, I, over my head. Death cross, golden cross. We did this one, I think, eight EMA crosses the 20.
Of course, I don't have the moving averages up, so I don't know. I don't know why I'm not getting my little stars. I'm supposed to see these little stars on the chart. I don't have the first five scans listed that you have. The PGP group are the only ones I see. Um, yeah, because these the other ones are ones that I've... Um, are ones that I've created. So these are probably the only ones you're going to have. It's definitely something that you have to. I again, I'm not, I'm not an expert in this. Um, I can try to see if I can get Jerry to come in here one day, uh, maybe next week, and maybe we'll spend a session going through it with uh, Mike or Jerry, if y'all would like that. Uh, Wayne says, I've forgotten how you showed to find the ATR using MedVed. Thanks for the reminder. Yeah, so there's two different ways you could do it, Wayne. You can either, if you have one chart, like a daily chart, you can add it there. Okay, and you would go to indicators and then go to average true range, which is in the bottom section. Okay, and you'll see it down in the bottom. And you, you just have to be on a daily chart. Or, or from a minute chart, you can just leave it in there on the bottom. And then go to a, th a 390, because 390 is one day. And then you'll see, like for whole logics, the ATR is 74 cents. You just have to go to a 390. And there, there is, we talked about this, I think, last week. There's value in, in using the ATR um, on a minute time frame because on certain stocks, especially like, you know, real volatile, whoops. And let's just pick like Amazon. You know, on a 10-minute time frame, it's got a $3.25 $3 ATR. There's probably value in knowing that. But if I need to know real quick what, what's the daily ATR, I just, whoops. Hold on. I just go to a 390. And actually, what might even make sense is to add to your quick access toolbar. Oh, you can't. Never mind. I was going to say add a 390. You can't because it's a custom time frame. But, you know, so it says here 3982. So let's compare that. Let me open up a historical chart. And then let's we're on the daily. And let's add average true range to the chart. So there's a slight variance, and that may have to do with if one chart is using, um, well, this is daily data. This is probably, 
is this using, hold on. Current day, hold on, never. Yeah, so if you have pre-market data in, it's gonna vary it, make it a little bit very further apart. But a 390 and a daily should be really close to each other, generally within pennies. I mean, we're talking a $1,600 stock, so 17 cent variance is not much. But from my testing, like if I pick a stock like, uh, uh, here, Intel, okay, dollar fourteen. Dollar fourteen, you know, one point three nine nine one, one point three nine six three. So you can use either or. Oh, you're lost. I'm sorry. Okay. So you depends on which chart you're using. Like, okay. Let me give you an example. Hold on. Let me stop this. Let me close that. Let me close that. Okay. Let's let's go to, let's keep it simple. Let's just go to this. This is what's called my two chart layout. Okay. It has a historical chart on the right and a intraday chart on the left. Okay. So, I can go to my historical chart, click on main, go to indicators, and I can go down and add average true range. Okay. It's an indicator. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to squeeze it down because I don't really need to see all that extra stuff. So light. Now I'm on a daily right now on a one day chart. So it has a daily ATR of $2.12. If I go to a weekly, it's going to show me the weekly ATR. That's six dollars and two cents. If I go to a, a monthly, it's going to show me the ATR for the month, twelve dollars and seventy-two cents. Okay. So I just need to know the daily. That's all. So you can do it like this. You can do it off of a daily chart. But if you're like me during the day, and I'm going to switch my layout. Let me go to my popper dropper layout. My popper dropper layout, I don't use a daily chart. I have a one minute, a three minute, and a five slash 15, which you can't see. I'm gonna throw the five over, okay? So you can see it. And this is five or 15. I use a 15 when I'm looking at um, um, for, for the FIB levels, okay. So, and you'll notice, I notice at the bottom of this chart, I have ATR. So that right now is a 15 minute ATR. It's 18 cents on a 15 minute time frame. But if I want to see the daily for light, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just switch this to a 390 minute time frame because there's 390 minutes trading minutes in a day. Okay. So now I can see down at the bottom that the daily ATR is $2.11, right? That's the daily ATR, $2.11. And remember when we were on that other layout, If I go back, what did I say? $2.11, two chart layout. Oh, I didn't save it. Average true range. What did I say? 2.11, there it is, 2.11. Because I'm on the daily chart. Okay, are you looking at the top section or the bottom section? There's two sections under indicators. You're probably looking up here. You need to scroll down. 
okay, th this says a main chart and the next section says usually on a separate chart. Some, some of these indicators are used on a separate chart. What that means is down here that, you know, the separate chart is, is going to open up another chart. See down there, there's a, that's a separate chart. These are separate charts within that window. Depends on the indicator. Some indicators go on the main chart, some go on a separate chart. So you can put ATR on the on the upper chart if you want to. I, it just gets a little busy. So I squish it because I just need to see the number. I don't really care about the line. I just want to see the number. Okay, so now that you found it, you're going to highlight it. Okay, average true range and click the arrow right here so it brings it over. And it should open it up on the lower chart. Do you see it now? You should have it down on the bottom chart. Do you, do you see it here on yours? Wayne? Wayne. Let me know if it's working. Yeah, I mean, you can add any kind of, no, you don't see it. Okay, so you went to V, you went to main indicators you went down to the lower section average true range did you did you hit the little arrow or did you drop and drag it over to the to the side you need to hit the little arrow so that it moves over or you need to grab it and drop it and drag it you should see it on the right side under below the main chart once you've done that, you have to drag, either drag it over or use, highlight it and use the arrow and then click OK once you've done that. And it should be at the bottom. Let me know once you've done that and if it worked. Are you good now? Do you have it on your chart? Yay, it works. Okay. So are you on a daily or a daily chart right now? Or are you on a minute chart? Minute. Okay. So on a minute chart, remember, you have to go to a 390 minute to get the daily ATR. Okay, so here, I just put it down on my minute over here. So if I want the daily ATR, I have to go to main, frequency, custom, and then type in 390. So see, 211. That's how you get the daily ATR on a minute chart. 
and you're gonna have to save your layout um, or it's not gonna I don't think it'll come back unless you save it so actually what I'm gonna do is I'm I'm not gonna leave it on my 390 on my two chart layout um, but I'm going to leave it on this chart because I do use this in the morning when I'm reviewing my poppers and droppers. And that way, when I go to the daily chart, then I can share with everybody, Hey, here's the ATR. So I'm going to go to save layout and that's my two chart layout. So now I will always have the, this when I go to a different layout, and then go back to it, it'll be there. So let's go back to it. And now that indicator is always going to be there. So now in the mornings, when I review poppers and droppers, I can tell you guys, hey, this is the daily ATR for light. That'll be helpful. And again, any any indicator that you want, you want. I mean, I you know, I, I'm not into too much. I mean, we we use a couple of additional indicators. I don't want to overkill. But there's all kinds of. I, I mean, I don't even know what some of these are. Ergo dick, ergo dick, candle oscillator. I've never heard of an ergo dick. Elliot Oscillator, Elder Ray. I mean, I'm, some of these I'm not even. Woody's Pivots. T3 actually is a decent one. It's like an EMA. Momentum Trend. What is that? See, I have some little thing up here. I don't know what that is. Delete Momentum Trend. Now my chart doesn't work. Ah, uh, why? What? It should work. What's not working? Hey, Wayne, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Text me your cell phone to this number, and I'll call you after the show. Text 972-841-8886. I just sent it out. Text me your number, and I'll call you. How, how do you undo a historical chart? Uh, what do you mean by undo a historical chart? Like, how do you remove remove a historical chart? You just close it. If you don't want it, you, cl you close it. Oh, uh, how do you change back to minute? You right-click from it. You can do it that way and go to intraday chart. You might have to go back to your saved layout. But you can right click from a historical to bring up an intraday chart. It'll be whatever your saved, I think, intraday chart is. But like I said, there, there are a lot of different indicators. It just depends on, 
you know, I don't know what super trend, super trend, never heard of that one. I mean, it'd be interesting to, to kind of play with some of these other indic three touch trend lines. Never heard of that one. Interesting. That's a th that's a three touch trend line. <laughs> And there could be something worth value in there. But I also believe you can you can get um, analysis paralysis and you get too many different indicators in there and then it's like, great. Now I'm looking at too many different things. And... I don't know what the heck is going on. Alma? Never heard of Alma. I don't even know about it. ATR trailing stop. Huh. Interesting. Bollinger Bands, Camarilla Pivots. I've heard of Camarilla Pivots. I just won't use ATR, but thanks for your time. It's okay. It's one of those things, you, you know, honestly, Wayne, I really haven't been using them much lately because we know what's, you know, most of the stocks we watch are moving around anyways. If you need help at some point, just call me. You've got my number. I'd be happy to, you know, send me an email or call me and I'll be happy to spend some time and help you set up your, your, um, your layout, your med bed. I'll help you build a, a layout for you, how you like it, and we'll put in what you, whatever you want. I, I'm I'm always happy to do those things for you guys. Okay. Please please remember that. Very happy to do that for y'all. I know, if, you know, that for some of y'all, this is, it, it's a lot because you were, what you were used to before, it, there's a lot more, um, I mean, it's just, you know, I know Wise Trade was very simplistic in its nature and it's, for some traders, it's, you know, this is a little more, um, a little too much information overload to have to, to learn. But I, like I said, I don't mind doing whatever I need to do to help you out. What is times, time series forecast? Never seen that one before. I'm going to keep mine simple. Um, I know you said you don't use high ATRs, but does clear lines give a decent entry point? Yeah. I mean, we looked at Amazon earlier. Yeah. I mean, here was a cross up. Here was a here. So when you had the three minute cross up and then you had another one behind it, that's an ad point. Reversal, back up, down, down, up. Yeah, it gives very clear on high ATR. Absolutely. Actually gave a down arrow right out of the gate. Um, Google, yeah. 
I think as you get down in the minutes, smaller than three, it gets a little noisy and becomes, you know, you get start to get too many. But three minute or five minute, I mean, you get one of those, you've got, you're getting some pretty good moves. Three tends to be a pretty good time frame. If you can get a one and three together, those those provide pretty good um, signals. But yeah, this works great on high ATR stocks. Okay, guys, um, that's it. Any more questions? Markets are closed and I'm ready to wrap up for the day. Any more questions? Happy to answer. Yeah, th this is recorded. Uh, I do record these each week and I post it to our YouTube page. If you want to um, catch it on the YouTube page, just go to equity alerts, equity alerts.com. Uh, the top of any page, you'll see the YouTube link. That'll take you to our page and you'll find the recorded sessions and I'll be posting this one at some point later uh, this afternoon or this evening. Yep, they do get posted there. If you have additional questions or need assistance, further assistance, please uh, email me, kip at equity-alerts.com. Anytime I'm here to help out. Have a great evening, everyone, and I will see all of you uh, later. Bye-bye.